It is 8.14, so a change in the law comes into effect today, which will allow police to intervene immediately to stop slow-walking tactics by Just Stop Oil protesters. The new powers will let officers use a wider definition of what counts as serious disruption to the life of the community. Previously, the police had to judge each protest in isolation uh, before deciding themselves whether it reached the threshold of causing serious disruption. That's the phrase. Mm. And now the Home Office says the change will actually give officers the authority to move quickly and firmly to prevent Just Stop Oil from disrupting communities, commuters and tourists. So it's a clarification of the law that was already there because I think the police were having to just make a decision on on the moment, yeah. which is unfair on them. Yeah, quite. Yeah. So it's clearer for them and also mm -hmm. it's clearer for the protesters Absolutely. to understand what the yeah. effects could be. Well, we're joined by Just Up Oil's Chloe Naldrick. Good morning to you, Chloe. Good Thank morning. you for coming in this Good morning. morning. Uh, firstly, I, do, I mean, what's your reaction to the fact that these they've clarified this law and the impact that's going to have on you and your fellow protesters? Well, that's a really important question and I think it's important for all of us to understand that this, these laws are preventing every single one of us in this country from raising our voice about anything that we care about. But what I'd just like to, I'd just like to start the conversation in a slightly different place, if that's all right, because we, we often come on here and we talk about how we're protesting, mm. but we don't often talk about why. You don't ask us why we're protesting. And the reality is that we are in a climate emergency. And I know you don't use that word, you talk about climate change, but emergency is the word... I think we do, quite word. regularly. Our meteorologist, Laura, is often explaining what's going on in terms of the, the climate emergency we have. And, 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 and we've got a debate, we had a debate about the water shortages that we have at the minute. It's not something that we've shy away from. Yeah, but, that, but we need to understand that that's the word that the scientists are using. They're using the word emergency. So the UN's body on climate change, they produce these reports. That it's 196 countries that thousands of scientists come from. And their most recent report was called by the Secretary General of the UN, an atlas of human suffering, code red for humanity. So what we need to understand is that, is that that's what is going on mm. right now. And this report, the most recent part of it, so there's different parts of it. One is about um, what's happening, one is about why, and one is about what we can do about it. And there's loads of things that we can do, real-world solutions, yeah. not magic, not miracles. No. But the first thing we have to do is we have to stop burning coal and oil and gas for energy. So I think one of the interesting things, Chloe, and apologies for interrupting, but we don't have a lot of time and it's really interesting to get your perspective on this, that, as you say, that maybe the, we've been distracted by why you're protesting and the means you're protesting rather than the story. And is that reflected the fact that the impact that you're having, your protests are having, you aren't able to drag the public with you so they understand why you're doing it, so they're sort of applauding your efforts rather than getting frustrated by them. The most recent sort of uh, survey that we had is that 50% of the public don't agree with what you're doing. Now, you need more the than... Tactics, yeah, possibly, the tactics, possibly, rather than the aim. Sorry, yeah. the tactics. But you need more than 50% to agree with the tactics in order for them to want to make the change that you're talking about, which we all desperately need. Well, I think we need to ask why that, why that is, why the public feel that way about it. And, you know, programmes like this and, and, and other um, reports in, in the media are, are focusing on the disruption to ordinary people as if we aren't ordinary people. And we are ordinary people. We are doctors and teachers and plumbers and electricians. We're mums, we're, we're grandparents. We, we are ordinary people who have listened to what is being said in these reports, have listened to the Secretary-General of the UN when he says we're on the highway to climate hell with our foot on the accelerator. Yeah. And, and so we are ordinary people who are doing what the government won't do, which is taking appropriate action, well, given take the existential crisis that yeah. we're facing. Well, let's just take a look, because um, the House of Lords have voted in this change, which allows um, the police to um, sort of intervene more quickly. I think the average time it takes for the police to remove slow-walking protesters is between 13 and 19 minutes. That's according to the Home Office. But these new powers will give them the right to intervene immediately. And I think we can see what happened yesterday morning, sort of within hours of the... Um, of the protests happening. And this is where, in central London, within minutes, two police vans arrived, uh, walking backwards while speaking to the protesters, explaining the new regulations. And it says here that there was a polite conversation, one officer saying it was a final warning to get onto the pavement, and then the protesters complied. Is that a bad thing? I mean, it doesn't... They, the protest wasn't stopped, it was moved from the middle of the road to the pavement, which is a sort of... It's a nuanced difference, but does it change what you're trying to achieve? It just stops the 
serious disruption as the as the Home Office would well, put we're, it, we're to, having, to, to drivers. We're having this conversation about tactics again and not and not about the existential crisis yeah. that we're facing. And I, I just think we all really need to be engaging and we're not engaging okay, look, with look, what this It's means. interesting what you say, though, but by throwing orange powder on, at the World Snooker Championships or going to the Chelsea Flower Show and all of these things, definitely your name is known because it says here that only 21% of the public haven't heard of Just Stop Oil. But as you said, 50% of the public still don't agree, don't agree with, with the tactics. Well, I've, I've seen polls that say actually 92% of people have heard of Just Stop Oil and that's really important because what we're calling for is really straightforward. It's the end of new oil and gas licences. And that is what's being called for by the UN, by the International Energy Agency. So, so interestingly, uh, we talk about this all the time. So I think it's really unfair, Chloe, you to sort of angle the accusation that we aren't addressing it. We call it a climate crisis. Laura is a, a very experienced meteorologist that is constantly telling us about what we can do, the differences that we can make. And we have representatives from Just Stop Oil and from other protest groups coming on to share their concerns. Absolutely. The thing that I think that everybody will turn around and say is, look, we absolutely agree that something needs to happen. We need to do these things. The tactics you are employing, though, are detracting from the story that you are trying to tell. Because when you turn up at the Chelsea Flower Show, where everything at the Chelsea Flower Show has to be sustainable, it is reusable, it's taken elsewhere, it is put in various parts of the world, it's, it seems like the most bizarre place to go and protest, when actually the Chelsea Flower Show reflects what people are trying to do to improve the environment. Pollination, the you know, having well, wild argue, meadows. So arguably. is it actually just about the headlines for you? Is it actually just about getting Just Up Oil into the headlines? And then it is just about the tactics. Look, this is about making sure that we're having this conversation all the time, in every context. Because everything that we love, we stand to lose. So everything that we love is the context in which we're, we're fighting, f you know, for, for our lives. And I, and I really wish we were having that conversation properly. Do you think you'll about change? The Do you think with the, with the way that the, the, they've clarified the law now, will that change how you will go about what you're doing with your protests so you can do your protest and share the important narrative of why you're doing the protest rather than infuriate the general public who then turn around and say, this is so frustrating because I can't get to work, I can't do the job Somebody that I need to do. Somebody missed their father's funeral because of one of your protests. Look, it's everything that we love that we're facing. And let's just talk about the proportionality here. We're, looking, we're talking about ecosystem collapse. We're talking about crop failures leading to food shortages, leading to people not being able to afford their shopping. We're talking about, you know, wildfires destroying people's homes. We're talking about flooding. We're talking about what's happening in New York at the moment, where people literally can't breathe. And the protests that we're undertaking in London are, as you say, disrupting a small number of roads for less than half an hour in a city where we've got 60,000 roads. You know... <laughs> So it won't what? change, you don't think? Of course think? it won't change. Okay. Because we're fighting for our lives and we're fighting for our children and we're fighting for our future. Mm -hmm. And until the government start communicating about that, it's not even one of the government's top five priorities. The government can't even make climate crisis one of its top five priorities when we know that actually it's, it's joint third as a concern for, yes. for ordinary people. And it's interesting, isn't it, because we... Yeah. And, um, you know, even the Labour Party, who you might you know, want on side, they have also not said that they will cancel fossil fuel licences, research licences. But they've said the, no new no oil. No new ones. Yes. But is that good enough for Just Stop Oil? Well, I think... Do you have... Polit the thing is, what you need is political influence as well, don't yeah. you? Because the decision makers are there. Yeah. So does what, La or what Labour is offering, is that enough for Just Stop Oil? It's not just about what's enough for us it's, it, for, in Just Stop Oil. It's about what the scientists are calling for and what the UN are calling yes. for and what we but all I'm need. saying in terms of a policy but decision, in terms of the general election, people deciding which way to vote. Yeah. And if they do listen to what you have to say, regardless of your tactics, who would you say, you know, who's the best... Who, which is the best... Option. option. Well, look, I think what's really interesting about Labour coming out and saying that they, that they won't licence any new oil is, is I think that's fascinating because Labour is absolutely determined to get into government at the next parliament and I don't think they would be releasing policies that they didn't think were playing well with the majority of the, of the population. And, you know, we constantly hear that, you know, this isn't popular with the public, this isn't popular with the public, but the public want action. And that action is enough for Just Stop Oil, is it? What, the Labour's policy? No, not, no not necessarily, but they, because they are, they're not talking about rescinding the licences that might already have been granted, and, and that isn't necessarily good enough. Okay. Right. But what we need to do is we absolutely cannot be licensing new oil and gas fields. Uh, Chloe, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Uh, right, quick competition. Andy's in Barcelona with all the details for you. Morning, Andy.
Morning, Benny Boy. Thank you very much indeed. I've got £250,000 to give away. A quarter of a million pounds is up for grabs. I'm on my